Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, a hematologist at Stanley Kim Clinic for Blood Disease and Cancer located in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Leukemia is a blood cancer in which the bone marrow produces too many white blood cells out of control. And the chronic lymphocytic leukemia uh, indicates that the leukemic cells are arising from the line of lymphocyte having a chronic indolent course. We will discuss more in detail and thank you for watching. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, is the most common leukemia in adults, mostly affecting elderly people with average age 70 years. The bone marrow produces too many monoclonal B lymphocytes, which are functionally incompetent because they can't produce normal antibodies. It has chronic indolent disease course up to 50% of patients with no symptoms at the time of diagnosis. The median survival is 10 years. However, some patients have a aggressive disease and do poorly. It is still considered not curable with the conventional treatment. How we make a diagnosis of CLL is rather simple. By checking the CBC, which shows the high lymphocyte counts, and by looking at the uh, peripheral blood smear in the microscope, seeing many uh, mature-looking lymphocytes and the many smudge cells. As disease progressed, patients develop enlarged lymph nodes, liver spleen, and anemia thrombocytopenia. And we also use the uh, uh, special blood test to test for biomarkers. We use the flow cytometry uh, to confirm the uh, presence of monoclonal B lymphocytes. And the FISH test will detect the genetic defects, molecular analysis, beta to microglobulin, bone marrow cytogenetics. But in most cases, bone marrow biopsy is not necessary for diagnosis of CLL. This is the blood smear from one of my patients. It shows many small, mature-looking lymphocytes and uh, smudge cells. Under high power field, you can see it better. Smudge cells, it's a fragile lymphocytes, easily smudged, and the mature looking lymphocyte. In early stages, patients usually don't have any symptoms. As disease progresses, they start to feel fatigue and weak, having weight loss, fever, night sweats. Enlarged lymph nodes, mostly in the uh, neck. Enlarged spleen and liver anemia, thrombocytopenia, and the autoimmune hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia is kind of characteristic for CLL. We stage CLL because it predicts the prognosis. Two kinds of system, RI staging system, Binet system. RI system is more commonly used clinically. It has five stages. In stage zero, patient has lymphocytosis. Stage one, enlarged lymph nodes, stage 2, enlarged spleen or liver. In stage 3, patient has anemia, and uh, in stage 4, thrombocytopenia. When a patient comes with a high lymphocyte count but less than 5,000, the, below the uh, level of CLL diagnosis, uh, it's called monoclonal B lymphocytosis, MBL. It has two groups, low count MBL, the lymphocyte counts less than 500 in the high count MBL, uh, over 500 but less than 5,000. Low count have no problem, but high count MBL can progress to CLL at the rate of one to 2% a year, so it's a, a pretty malignant condition. Majority CLL patients do well, but some patients have poor prognosis. They are high risk patients having one or more poor prognostic markers. Deletion 17P. When the short arm of the chromosome number 17 is deleted, it's a poor prognosis sign. The TP53 is a tumor suppressor gene that prevents cancer from occurring. So the protective TP53 gene is mutated, cancer can develop easily and grow fast. So it's become a poor prognosis marker. Interestingly, when the IGHV gene is mutated, it becomes a, a good prognosis marker. But unmutated IGHV is a poor prognosis sign. Deletion 11Q. 
The deletion of the long arm of the chromosome number 11 is a poor prognosis marker. Beta-2 microglobulin correlates with the total number of leukemia cells, so the high level of beta-2 microglobulin is a poor prognosis sign. When the bone marrow cytogenetic study shows many karyotype gene abnormalities, it's a poor prognosis sign. ZEP70 and the CD38 are proteins normally found in the T lymphocytes, but when they are found in the leukemic B lymphocyte, especially at high level, patients have poor prognosis. On the other hand, there are favorable prognosis, prognosis markers. As we discussed above, mutated IGVH is the good prognosis marker. Trisomy 12, 3 of chromosome number 12 is a favorable marker. Deletion 13Q, deletion of the long arm of the chromosome number 13 is a good prognosis marker. When patients have a poor prognosis markers, they usually don't respond to chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy, but they respond well with a newly developed targeted therapy and their prognosis can improve remarkably. A few percent of cellular patients at some point during their lives develop the aggressive diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or even Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a very poor prognosis sign and they have fever, severe fatigue, rapidly enlarging lymph nodes. Lab will show elevated LDH level. We don't treat asymptomatic early stage patients because treatment does not improve survival but may be harmful because of drug toxicity. So who we treat patients having active disease? The active disease criteria include severe fatigue, fever, weight loss, and the night sweats. Also, patient has progressive lymphocytosis with lymphocyte doubling time less than six months, or the lymphocyte counts increase uh, more than 50% in two months. Massive or symptomatic lymphadenopathy, massive and progressive and symptomatic splenomegaly, development of or worsening anemia less than 10 gram, and the thrombocytopenia less than 100,000. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia not responsive to uh, corticosteroid therapy. Symptomatic or functional extra nodal involvement to skin, lung, or spine. Alkylating chemo drugs such as chlorambucil or cyclophosphamide used to be the mainstay of treatment for decades. They are not very effective but has less toxicity, so we still use it sometimes, especially for elderly patients. 20 years ago, rituximab, the first anti CD20 monoclonal antibody, was introduced and it was used as the first immune therapy drug. This rituximab was combined with a cyclophosphamide and the fludarabin, a purine analog, under the name of FCR regimen. And it has shown to induce deep and long complete remission. So we still use it, but only for younger patients due to a high toxicity. For elderly patients, bendamustine and the rituximab combination is used slightly less effective but better tolerance than uh, FCR regimen. However, this FCR was not effective for high risk patients with a deletion 17P or TP3 mutation or unmutated IVGH. The newly developed target therapy is effective for both high risk and the favorable risk patients, producing high response rates and the longer disease free survival. It has acceptable toxicity profile so it's useful for all ages, including elderly people. It's given by mouth. There are three kinds, Bruton tyrosine kinase, BTK inhibitors, with the two FDA approved drugs, ibrutinib and the acalabrutinib. Another one is BCL2 protein inhibitor with the phenetoclax. The other one is PI3K inhibitors, Idelalisib and the Duvalisib. Ibrutinib is the first BTK inhibitor. B 
BTK is crucial to signaling of B cell receptor, a key feature in the CLL cell growth. By inhibiting BTK, it blocks the B cell receptor leading to death of CLL leukemia cells. It can be used as a monotherapy or as a combination with obinutuzumab as the first line or second line therapy. It's to be taken daily until these progressions. It's effective for high risk patients with a deletion 17P, TP53 mutation, or unmutated IGHV. It has unique side effects bleeding, hypertension, and atrial fibrillation. So the patients who take the blood thinner or having uh, very high blood pressure or atrial fibrillation uh, need to avoid ibrutinib. Acalabrutinib is a selective BTK inhibitor. It appears to be as effective as ibrutinib with a somewhat less side effects, so it may be useful for patients who become intolerable to ibrutinib. Patients taking brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors like ibrutinib or acalabrutinib should avoid the uh, grapefruits, certain antibiotics like uh, erythromycin, ciprofloxacin, antifungal like a uh, fluconazole, ketoconazole, and a certain blood pressure medicine like a uh, diltiazem or verapamil. Ibrutinib and acalabrutinib are metabolized by cytochrome P enzyme system. So when cytochrome P enzyme system is inhibited, the ibrutinib cannot be cleared and the blood drug level rises, resulting in an increased toxicity. The grapefruit and these drugs are cytochrome P enzyme inhibitors. Phenetoclax is a B-cell lymphoma 2, BCL2 protein inhibitor. Because BCL2 protects the uh, CLL leukemia cells, blocking the BCL2 leads the leukemia cells to programmed cell death. It's also effective for high-risk patients. It can be used as the first-line or as the second-line therapy. Most targeted therapy are taken by mouth every day continuously until disease progressed. But when the venetoclax is used with the obinutuzumab, you can uh, limit the duration of treatment to one year. For relapsed second-line therapy, uh, two years of combination therapy with the venetoclax with the rituximab has been approved by FDA. Because the uh, venetoclax is powerful medicine, it can cause life-threatening tumor lysis syndrome. It is also metabolized by the cytochrome P enzyme system, so patients need to avoid the grapefruits and other cytochrome P enzyme inhibitor drugs. Phosphoinositol 3 kinase PI3K inhibitors have two drugs, idelalisib and duvelisib. PI3K is a group of enzymes important in B cell receptors, so by blocking these enzymes, it leads to the cell death of chronic lymphocytic leukemia cells. They, have a, they are very powerful drugs, and, but also have a serious side effects, especially severe diarrhea and the colitis sometimes leading to intestinal perforation. The advent of targeted therapy with more effective drugs brings a good news to high-risk patients who otherwise would have a poor prognosis. However, we still have some questions here. Although the new targeted therapy showed high response rates and uh, longer disease-free survivals, its benefit in terms of the long-term overall survival has not been confirmed. The duration of the clinical studies is too short. Another question is, among those new drugs, which drug or drug combination is better? There are no clinical studies directly comparing one with the other. Another question is, what is the best way to use them? We can use dibrutinib alone as the first line and then venetoclax later as the second line sequentially. But upfront combination of the ibrutinib and the venetoclax has shown highly effective and well tolerated even in elderly patients. Lastly, the cost of targeted therapy is enormous. For example, the cost of chlorambucil is about $400 a month, but 
if I brought in $14,000 and the patient have to take it indefinitely. However, human life is too precious to be measured by money.